Okay, so the greatest common divisor. Well, we'll use this flowchart to, um, you know, do our code. But for now, let's design this, design this layout. Okay, M N and then greatest common divisor G C D five. Okay, so here's our form. I'm gonna add my toolbox and my properties. I just need the property window. I don't need that solution up here. So I need a label for the first number. And you can format it once and you just copy and paste. It's quicker that way. I need a label. I need a text box. I need a button. That's it, right? So let's do a label here. The uh, first will be just the M, the first number. Font, uh, I'll use again 20 to make it big. This is the LBL uh, M, the label. And this text box will be uh, TXTM. The font will be also 20. There's our number, first number. Okay, and then now you can just copy this, right? Select it and then control and then drag. The second number here, and then one more for the GCD the model. Okay, so I'm gonna change this M to N. So L B L N. The text is just be N. The text box would be T X T N. You can call it num one, num two, doesn't matter. And down here is the L B L. GCD. And then the text will say GCD for the greatest common divisor. And I'll move that a little bit right here. This is the TXT GCD. Okay. And then our button. Make it something like this. <clears throat> and this would be the BTN. Just put GCD. The font will be again 20. Well, maybe like 15, I guess. And uh, you know, feel free to change the color. Maybe we we'll change it to a different color. The back color we can change it to like I, don't know, I like orange. It's Halloween. I think scaring soon. So this will be uh, find. What does it say? Find greatest common divisor. Okay. So find greatest common divisor. I think I pretty much um, that should do it. <coughs> Let me know if you need more time. But we should be ready to go and then um, double click on this orange button to start our code. So the idea is to read the number from the N, TXTM and TXTN text boxes. And then we have to um, divide that into a certain number. See if the number can be um, divided into both of those numbers. If it is, then that is the greatest common divisor. And you may have more than one, so we want to make sure also the, the largest common divisor, right? Not one. If there's a, a larger number besides one, then that would be the greatest common divisor. And then if that's found, then we'll output that down here. Okay, so uh, double click this.
and then here is now cold and then now we're going to um, read this part here and then you look at this put it here you can see it we use this uh, flow chart to help us solve this problem and you know the flow chart already put everything in order so uh, that's pretty um, straightforward so the first thing is, is we need to get two numbers right two positive numbers um, M and N so we'll add that into uh, here so we need M and N here so we could uh, dim um, M just to kind of match what the book says you could call it something else okay M as integer and this would be coming from where which field we just match our form right this this text field here which is txtm so we get that from the txtm dot text field and we do one for n as well so the txtn dot text so here is, is we already read in two values n and n and again we'll assume that they're numbers and they're um, positive numbers you can also validate make sure they are positive numbers if it's not you can always um, you know loop through right put a loop and then say hey please enter a positive number okay but what's some of the other positive numbers so what's next it says uh, we need to check is n not equal to zero right so this is the condition and if you look at this this is a loop okay we're gonna if this is true then we're gonna go through here and then by the end of that we'll loop back and then we'll test the condition again if it's false they'll just exit out and then we'll just display M so M will be the largest uh, common divisor and let's see what this one um, does for us so we'll test if n is not equal to zero so right in here and let me shrink this so we can kind of see at the same time so so how do you call that in here you say um, so we're going to use a, um, a, a loop so in this case a for loop would not probably would not be a good idea okay because you need to test initially whether it's true or not true then we exit out so it'll be a, a do loop or a while loop okay so um, let's use a, a while loop or do while loop <clears throat> so we can say uh, do while here we'll say n well n is not equal zero if that is true right it's not equal zero if that is true it will run the loop <clears throat> if you follow this model otherwise if it's false then the instruction has to display m as the common denominator so after this assuming if it's false then um, we'll display M. <laughs> so we'll be down here. The result will be the um, TXT GCD items, only uh, well, text. This will be M. That's what it says, right? Because M is the greatest common divisor, it says. So that's this box down here, and then we're done. So we just need to take care of these inside here. So the first thing is we need to set t equals to n. So t is a, a third variable that we need to set. So out here, we'll do dim t as integer. And we'll leave that as, uh, as nothing. Or we can leave it as 0 is OK, too. But it will be 0. 
And if that is true, then we'll say t is n. Okay. The set means assign that value. The next box says n is equal to m mod n. So it's pretty straightforward, right? And then finally, we set m is equal to t. <coughs> and then uh, loops again. It loops back. We check the n again because n has been modified in here, right? n is no longer the same. And then n is greater or equal to 0. It's not equal to 0. Uh, if it's true, then it will go through again. Until it is equal to 0. Okay, let's see if this works. So it looks pretty short. <coughs> we'll see if this uh, will work. So let's save this. And if you look at the book example, so the way is just to use what they have and see if this is true. So it's 30 and 35. Okay, so I want to run this now. <coughs> so we're going to use 30 and 35. If it's correct, then there should be 5 down there. Okay. So 5 is the greatest common divisor. What if it's 36? So I'm hoping that that should be what? 6, right? So it's 6. Okay. I wonder if, um, if, what, if what if we swap this around? Let's see, 36 and 30 over here. And let's just for now just re remove that. Should it still be six? Yeah, it's still six. So it still works. Uh, what if just put some arbitrary number, like whatever it is, right? And then it's one because there's no common um, divisor between those two numbers. Okay. Uh, if you put like uh, 12 and 2, then of course it should be 2. Uh, 12 and 6, it should be 6. 12 and uh, 14 would be 2, because that's the only number that can divide into both of those numbers. Okay, any questions on how this was solved? Very easy, very straightforward. <coughs> and that's why, um, you know, pseudocode and uh, flowchart can be used for this very um, purpose to kind of help you write your code very easily this way. And um, if all goes well, then your function, your program should run without any um, much effort on your part to debug. If it doesn't work, maybe the pseudocode is incorrect or uh, you incorrectly coded your information. Okay, so maybe you swap this two around. If you put n mod m, then maybe the answer will not be correct. Okay. <coughs> okay, um, so any questions? If not, we'll take another break. We'll come back and then we'll do one example that will be very similar to the assignment and hopefully that can um, give you some idea as to how you can set up your, your um, project. Okay, so I'll see you back in about 10, 10 minutes.